as we walked up, you noticed it's a pretty roomy cockpit compared to a lot of tactical jets. And that was a nice thing for some of the longer missions. A7 could carry a, a pretty good amount of fuel and with a single turbofan, it could fly for a long time. I mean, the real key was the heads up display and the weapons computer. So heads up display, you know, if you're sitting in the cockpit, you're looking through this glass and it would show you your horizon, your velocity vectors, but it gave you a good sense and, and dive angles and, and all those things. One of the, the more clumsy parts of the A7 is, uh, is the computer was down off of your right thigh there and you could see the keyboard, you know, a standard uh, zero through, through nine keyboard. And so to add coordinates of uh, a position you want to go to or make adjustments, you had to figure it out blindly or, uh, or start looking down off your right shoulder. The airplane came with what we call green light logic. And so as you look around, uh, here, there's your eight weapon stations. So if you were going to release a weapon from, let's say, station uh, one and eight, for example, the outer outboard wings, you would select those two, and then you had to pick the correct fuse. And if you had everything correct, when you turn the master arm on, all the lights would turn green. So that was an upfront indication that if you hadn't selected a fuse or you hadn't armed up, um, you weren't ready to drop. 